I'm Winston Edmondson, and you're watching Innovation Update. You know, I love covering the smartphone revolution. Every time I have an app developer on the radio show, I always get emails from you guys talking about how much more productive that the app has made you. Well, now it's time for the kids. Thanks to Louisville Independent School District's brand new policy, BYOT, which stands for Bring Your Own Technology, kids are now able to bring tablets, smartphones, really any gadget that can enhance the learning experience. So anytime I have a question about mobile electronics, I come to the expert, Jason Inger here at Verizon Wireless. Wanted to find out, because I'm getting so many emails from parents that want to know, okay, I'm sold. I want my kids to take a smartphone to school, but what are the best choices for children's smartphones? What's your advice? Do you have any, uh, any models that you think are going to be better than others? Yeah, well, most definitely. You know, it varies from uh, parent to parent, from kid to kid. It depends on age range. It depends on what they're really going to be using them for and, uh, you know, kind of their maturity level as well. Sure. Um, you know, I would say the two major competitors right now are going to be the, the, the iPhone operating system, the Apple's OS, and then uh, Android, which is made by Google. So, okay. um, you know, it, it, I, I would ask you know parents certain questions to, to find out what's going to be the best fit for their their individual needs and of course for their kids. So, you know, some advantages that the Apple has over uh, Android, for example, would be the ability to have built-in restrictions on the phone and the operating system uh -huh. itself. So, you know, a parent can actually set up a passcode on the phone. Um, and change restriction capabilities on the phone, such as access to the internet, access to downloading applications, removing applications, and, and these are all built into the actual operating system itself. It's all in-house by app. You know, that's attractive because you've got parents that maybe they're willing to ha let their child use a smartphone when they can monitor, but at school, who knows what they can get into, but you're saying Apple has built-in safeguards that they can almost customize what they can and can't do. Exactly. And Android doesn't have that. Correct. It's not, not built in. So that, you know, there are some third party applications on the Android platform that would allow them to do so. But again, you know, that it's built into the phone itself with Apple. You're not having to rely on a third party company to develop an application that allows you to do those types of functions. Gotcha. Interesting. Now you've got uh, the tablet revolution as well where so many people have the iPads, but then you also have some pretty interesting tablets from um, I guess Android as well. Sure. Now does it matter if you already have an Android phone or an iPhone? Is there an advantage to getting the same type of tablet? So is there interoperability between the iPhone and the iPad versus the Android and an Android tablet? Sure. The, the, I would say the main advantage you get is really just the user experience as far as already knowing the operating system. Ah. So you're not having to do the, the whole learning curve and figure out a, a complete new operating system uh, going from one to the other. So do you really need one to, to, to work the other one? No, you don't at all. Um, I, Personally, I have an iPhone for my phone, and I have an Android tablet, and I like that setup because I kind of get the best of both worlds. You know, I get I get both operating systems, I get the advantages that both offer, uh, without being restricted to just the one. Interesting. So, what's fascinating about this program is that it it's the entire range, kindergarten sure. through twelfth grade. So, when you talk about younger children, and, and my daughter is going into kindergarten, and she wants a smartphone, you know, I think she could actually handle it, but you know, motor skills aren't quite there, so. Let's talk about kind of ruggedness. What, what are the most uh, hardy smartphones that, you know, if they slip and fall on the floor, maybe it won't shatter? Sure. I mean, one thing to consider is that they are a giant screen. You yeah. Can around. So, you know, most of them are gonna are gonna be susceptible to some type of damage. Now, however, there is a, a model made by Casio called the Commando, and it's built with military specifications. So it's built to resist water, shock, and dust. Interesting. The phone can actually be submerged underwater for up to 30 minutes. The at a perfect time. Ch child's phone. Exactly. Yeah. Or a construction worker or <laughs> a number. Clutch. Of people. Yeah. Just anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm all thumbs. <laughs> what about? Um, Insurance. I mean, is that pretty standard where if you get your child a phone, you don't have to really sweat about it because you know you have an insurance policy. If it does smash into a million pieces, sure. it'll it'll be replaced. Well, yes and no. I mean, the insurance policy covers you against any kind of incidental uh, things that might happen: loss, theft, physical damage, liquid damage. But you still pay a deductible on those insurance right. policies. So just like your car, yeah, you have insurance in case something happens. But you're going to want to try to prevent that as much as possible. Um, you know, so cost effectiveness is is a good point. You know the the uh, insurance being factored into the total cost of ownership of one of these smartphones. Um, another thing to consider is the actual cost of the device itself. We were talking earlier about Apple being uh, able to be restricted so parents can kind of uh, 
um, change what they want their kids to be able to use and not use. Android not necessarily having that, but with Android, they're not restricted to the, the, the hardware itself as far as the operating system. Right. So you have a much broader range of devices to choose from, mm -hmm. much broader price range as well. So you can get phones for a lot less expensive, insurance policies also being less expensive on them. So cost being a factor, you know, that's one of the advantages of Android. You do have a cheaper insurance policy that we just talked about, but also the ability to have a less expensive phone as well. Kind of an interesting uh, pros and cons there. It's almost, wow, I mean, <laughs> Seems like it'd be difficult to make a decision because you know you you hear a lot of hype and there, a lot of people enjoy their iPhones. Sure. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, there's a, a huge variety, different shapes, different sizes uh, with Android. Jason, I want to talk about apps. Um, you know, a lot of parents they just don't know what the point of taking a smartphone to sure. school is. Now, you and I we use smartphones, and so I, I know personally my productivity has just increased tremendously, and so. I can think of a lot of tools where it's helped me, but can you think of any tools off, you know, right off the bat that would be useful for a student? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, that's that's the great thing about these smartphones is once you start downloading the applications, they become much more than just a phone. Uh, for example, there's you know scientific and graphing calculator applications available on the phone. So wow. you know you have a student that's maybe going in, into. Um, physics or geometry, different types of mathematical classes that require them to buy a $200 calculator. Yeah. That mitigates that cost by downloading a $15, $20 app. There you go. The so really the phone is free if you think about it that way. There you go. Because I mean, I remember uh, it's, it's fascinating how computing uh, processing speed sure. has, uh, has changed. And so you have these TI graphing calculators that were, yeah, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, and they're still out there and, and parents are still buying them for the kids. But now you've got smartphones about the same price, yeah. does the same thing. Exactly, <laughs> That's yeah. pretty cool. Not, not only that too, but you know, there's applications uh, like uh, SAT and ACT prep applications okay. as well. So it kind of help them study. Um, there's a, a homework um, kind of organizational tools available to keep their classes in order and keep their oh, calendar yeah. in order. You know, there, there's some interesting issue. ones that sync up with uh, additional phones. So if you as a parent are concerned that your, your child's not getting all, all, you know, all the homework done, when he enters the homework assignment on the phone, it will sync to your phone, so you can kind of keep track and make sure he's, exactly. he's getting it done. There you go. Hmm. So, I mean, I, I can't think of any real negative, you know, for a parent, right? I mean, right. it's just uh, at, at this price point. Um, well, t are there any are there any outstanding specials that parents should know about? Yeah, most definitely. We got some of our top of line Android phones right now on a buy one get one free promotion. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking at getting a smartphone for yourself and one for the kid for school, you know, you can get a. Uh, a Droid X2 or a Droid 3 right now on a buy one get one free station. Wow, yeah. awesome, awesome. Uh, quickly, where uh, can people, obviously there's Verizon wireless stores all over the Metroplex, sure. but uh, if they want this expertise that I always depend on, where can they where can they go? Where are Come you? see me here in Flower Mound. Uh, we're on the corner of uh, Long Prairie Road and Dixon, right in the uh, Dix Sporting Goods and Target uh, shopping center. Fantastic, man, I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for your time, Winston. All right. Take care. <laughs>